opportunities to really impress the NCAA selection committee. But it's all got to start here because this one has huge implications. You don't want to drop one against the Missouri Tigers here at home. Ole Miss controls the opening tip. Rebels in their home whites. Missouri traveling in black tonight. Jamal Brakefield on the wing. He finds Matthew Morrell, who has been red hot as of late, and he starts hot tonight with a triple from the wing. And that's a good sign there for Ole Miss as Missouri came out showing some zone, but Ole Miss with the good recognition knocking it down. Tamar Bates averaging 19 a game in SEC play, along with Nick Honor, Kurt Lewis, Sean East the second, and the freshman Jordan Butler on the floor to start things out for Missouri. That one's knocked away, touched last by Ole Miss. Mizzou keeps it with 13 on the shot clock. You know, this is a game that Missouri has to do a really good job of executing. Ole Miss understands the importance and the urgency of this game, and the defense is going to be turned up. So you have to do a really good job of setting quality screens to get some quality shots, and you're going to have to step up big uh, if you're going to get it done on the road. Noah Carter gets it to DeMar Bates, dumps it inside. Carter shot blocked by Musa Cisse. That's a big part of what Ole Miss does defensively. Morrell trying to make it two for two, and he does. And that's what they want to do. Cisse with the rejection inside, the defense leading to offense. If you cannot allow Ole Miss to get out in transition running on the sidelines, Matthew Morrell lining up another. Last four games, Morrell had hit 12 of 27 from deep. That's 44%. Mizzou gets on the board with Tamar Bates hitting that baseline jumper. Good move there by Tamar. They sh taking a shave, two, shot fake, one bounce, knocking it down. Breakfield pulls up mid-range off the mark. Nick Connor with the rebound. Sean East had that injury to his left knee against Vanderbilt. Collision on the floor, went off the floor. Actually came back in. Good feed. Butler got his own miss and flipped it over the rim. The freshman from Greenville, South Carolina, Jordan Butler. Excellent right there by Jordan Butler. Activity. Saw the mismatch down low and a good pass up high. Missed it, but kept the ball high on the offensive rebound. Three for three for Matthew Morrell. Wow. Got to get to that guy if you're Missouri. Understand where the shooters are. Morrell's in the zone. The 200th career three-point make for Morrell. Have to love the defensive intensity by Ole Miss, forcing the Tigers to have to run their offense far extended more than they want to be. Jamin Brakefield called for the sh for the foul. Good recognition by the Ole Miss Rebels finding the hot hand of Matthew Morrell. Going to have to force Missouri to make sure they have to change up their defense. Understand where Matthew Morrell is at all times, early in transition, recognizing where he is in the zone, and be a step closer to get better contests on him to put, make him put it on the deck. Missouri's bench kind of lobbying for free throws on that. The foul on the floor. Honor with the floater on the baseline. Ole Miss comes away with it. Chris Beard today in Ole Miss's shoot-around said he wanted his team to attack when the opportunity was there. He said, don't look to the bench for a play. Go to the rim. Well, they're definitely doing that right now, and they're getting all the bounces as that ball bounced off the heels of Missouri with a baseline out-of-bounds opportunity for Ole Miss. But really impressed that Dave answered the bell, as you mentioned, in the shoot-around today. He challenged his team to have a lot of urgency and intensity. They've done a really good job on the defensive end and executing in offensive half-court sets. You saw there Chris Beard has taken three different teams to the NCAA tournament, trying to make it four in his first season in Oxford. Jalen Murray kicks to the corner. Murray for three. He's off the mark. And Jalen Murray, who's one of the best three-point shooting guards in the SEC, for about the first eight to ten games of league play, has struggled over the last three games. Well, you know, shooters, you got to let them shoot. And, and, you know, one thing you hear with coaches as they're coaching shooters is allow them to be the player that they are. Coach Chris Beard likes to have confidence in his shooters. He understands that he's a big-time performer, and as the season goes on, he'll continue to find his stroke. Bates doubled on the baseline, and he turns it over. Jamal Murray, excuse me, Jalen Murray, he grabbed that ball but had his foot on the end line. 
Dennis Gates in his second season at Missouri last year in year number one, led the Tigers to the NCAA tournament. Two trips to the big dance as a head coach took Cleveland State there in the 2021 season. Head coach Dennis Gates did a tremendous job in his first year in the SEC. He actually voted with the USA Today as SEC Coach of the Year. Not the second year that he would like to have, but definitely continuing to coach his team. The, the biggest thing that he's really teamed to preach about this team is continue to be positive, fight through the adversity, and his team, even though with the 0-11 record in SEC play, continues to battle. Good touch there from Sean East, the second from about 17 feet. Three-point game. All of Ole Miss's points coming from behind the arc. All of them coming from Matthew Morrell. They seem to understand where Morrell is as, it, as Missouri drops back into a 1-3-1 zone. Kick out to Murray. His three is good. He had missed 13 of his previous 14 three-point attempts over the last three games at the start of this one. That's a big shot for number five. Huge shot and big for his confidence. But you know, when you're a shooter like Murray is, you never lose confidence. You continue to work on your game. Seen the final stroke. Butler fouled on the drive by Jamarian Sharp. Goes to the deck, and that will take us to our first timeout. Ole Miss starting this game out hot from beyond the arc. Rebels lead it by six. They understand, yes, they have been short uh, short this season as far as their roster is concerned, but this is a team that's going to continue to battle into the end. They're going to continue to understand the situation in front of them, and that's got to be reflect refreshing. You talk about coming off a season, making it to the NCAA tournament. This team will be back. Butler's first free throw. No oh, good. Second one all the way. Shoots 57%. Well, he missed both of those, but Missouri going to get a long offensive rebound after the tap out. Sean East guarded by Cisse. Which is one of the really good things about Ole Miss, the defensive versatility. East showing no ill effects from that knee injury, able to blow by Cisse for the reverse layup. Yeah, and that's a situation right there. If you're Cisse, you have to give him a little bit of a cushion. You understand you're switched out on a guard. Don't allow him to have the space to just blow right by you. Use your length. Make him shoot a contested jumper. Off an offensive rebound, Breakfield can't get the three to go. Ole Miss four of six from behind the arc to start the game. All four of those threes belonging to Matthew Morrell. Missouri staff wants Nick Honor to shoot. Told us today that they'd like to see 10 three-point attempts from him during the game. Well, you have to understand where your strengths lie. And if you're Nick Honor, he's a knockdown shooter from the outside. In this game, penetrating into the paint. Allen Flanagan lift off on the feed from Juju Murray. Wow. Great recognition there in the transition. Finding Flanagan for the alley-oop. Timeout taken by Missouri. 14.34 to go. Pretty good vision by your point guard on his way down the floor. And nice to have a guy like that. Pinpointed pass, and Alan Flanagan does the rest. Wow. Missouri taking the timeout. We talked about the injury situation a moment ago with Missouri. And obviously, basketball injuries are very important. But there is another issue that's going on with this Missouri program. We want to offer our well wishes to Dickie Nutt, who is dealing with a cancer diagnosis, going through treatments right now. He's in good spirits. You got the, uh, the I love you hand signal on the lapel for the Missouri coaches. They certainly are thinking about him. He has been a big part of the game of basketball, a lot of places for a long time. Second year on Dennis Gates staff at Missouri. And one of the really good guys in college basketball as well. Absolutely. One of the big reasons for the success that this Missouri program has had in recent years. But uh, we definitely give our well wishes to him. And, you know, they say he's still coaching. They sit him a lot of the games on Zoom, allow him to watch the practice. And I'm sure he's tuning in right now. Coaches will always continue to coach. But uh, our thoughts are definitely with him. Coach Dickey Nutt, we are thinking about you. Wish you were here. All the best to you as you fight through this treatment stage of the cancer diagnosis. Missouri able to break the press and get it into the front court. Jesus Carolero Martin has checked in for the Tigers. Carter had it knocked away. He touched it last, and so this is Ole Miss basketball coming the other way. Up, up. 
Bob Ormajak back into the game for Missouri as well. The senior from South Sudan. Have to bring some rim protection here from Mizzou, but Mizzou has to do a much better job of protecting the basketball. Cannot have the turnovers, but at least it was a turnover that led to a dead ball, not allowing Ole Miss to get out to the run. Brandon Murray tried to float it inside to Musa Cisse. He was pushed as he tried to go up for the catch. That foul against Carolero Martin. Coming up on Tuesday night, you got SEC hoops coming your way on Tuesday night. You got Missouri and Tennessee. Tell you more about that matchup. A little bit later in the show. All loose. Murray bounced around, and Missouri comes up with the loose ball. Honor pushing it up the floor. Honor with the floater, but it rims out. Tipped away. This time it's Morrell that chases down the loose ball. Fires it into the front court. Allen Flanagan on the drive. Real guarded by Honor on the perimeter. Now Murray for three. That's his second. Finding his rhythm again, Jamal Murray. Jalen Murray, rather, spotting it up from the outside. In terms of baskets in this game, Ole Miss has five made threes and a dunk. Well, that's what the fans come here to see. You want to see some entertainment, so you got to make sure you're knocking down from the outside. Three points and dunks. That's the way the game is played nowadays. That's a stat that Nate Oates could get <laughs> behind. He likes the perimeter and the rim play. Sean East able to get to the rim and flip it up and over. A couple of buckets now for East. Sean East is a very crafty player. Knows how to find a scene, get around someone, and flip it in. Bates guarding Morrell. Chris Beard told us that Ole Miss had to be prepared to see different defenses. Said Missouri going to change it up a lot. You can't get comfortable in man offense or zone offense. That's going to be a shot clock violation. Bodies all over the place, but the shot clock was running down. And so Ole Miss turns it over. Really good hands there by Carolero Martin. There it is, Tennessee and Missouri coming up on Tuesday night. Balls led by Dalton Connect coming off a big home win today against Vanderbilt. Traveling to Como, 7 Eastern on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Tennessee playing really good basketball mm. at the late. Still in the mix to fight for the SEC regular crown right on the heels of Alabama. Balls finished off the season sweep of Vanderbilt today. East fouled on the shot. Matthew Morrell just a moment ago walking off the floor. Maybe a trainer going along with him. It's not what Ole Miss fans want to see after the hot start that Matthew Morrell has had in this game. East with the make at the free throw line. Missouri a good free throw shooting team. 78% on the year. In fact, it's the second best free throw shooting year in the history of the Missouri program. Problem is, they have not gotten to the line a ton this season. Right, and, and to the little bit of frustration of head coach Dennis Gates, he wants to see his team be aggressive, but when they are aggressive, you want to see them be rewarded by getting to the foul line as they've taken on some hits. But nonetheless, uh, this is a team that has to continue to keep fighting, fighting, try to find their way, scrap their way and figure out a way to break through. Nearly six free throws fewer per game than their opponents. That's last among Power Six teams and 350th in all of Division One. And a whistle there. That foul on Sean East, and that will take us to a timeout. You know, just a little time on the exercise bike. Stay loose. We'll miss in front by five. That was uh, Marshall Henderson and Ole Miss. You know, Murphy Holloway, was he on that team there? Is that right? I believe he was. Murphy Holloway, a now a grad assistant on Chris Beard's staff here at Ole Miss. 
played against him several years professionally. Really good player, all-time leading rebounder here in Ole Miss history. Had an outstanding career internationally. Sean East on the drive, lost the handle, but he's fouled on the way up. So free throws coming. For the Louisville, Kentucky native. Good to see Matthew Burrell okay. Ian Brakefield and Cissé all set to check back into the ball game. Sean East already eight points. Chances to get to double figures if he makes both of these free throws. What a lift. We talk about it in the open to have a guy like Sean East back on the floor. Well, this Tiger team is going to go as he goes. And him having him healthy, he's been the one to create things not just for himself but for others. But it's not going to get it done just on the offensive end from Mizzou. If they're going to get things done, they have to continue to put together a string of stops defensively, particularly not allowing Ole Miss to get out in transition. Understand where the shooters are and make them play a slower pace in the half court. Ten points for Sean East. He's ninth in the SEC in scoring, averaging just a hair over 15 and a half per game. Murray surveying the defense. Works to the baseline, kicks it to the corner, and that's a turnover. There's the stop that Mizzou needed right there to put together a string, an opportunity to kind of change a little bit of the complexion of this game. The offensive end is starting to flow a little bit, but the game is settling down. Chris Beard at Ole Miss told his team earlier today, he said, you know what their record is. We all know what their record is. He said, but are you watching the games? Because every single game that Missouri has played, they have been in. Matthew Morrell, pull up. This three off the mark. That's his first miss from deep. Kind of dovetails with the conversation that we had with Dennis Gates. I asked him, I said, have you had any trouble continuing to motivate your team as Missouri takes its first lead? And he looked at me like I had two hands <laughs> on my shoulders. He said, no. He said, our standard is the standard. He said, I don't know how many games in a row we've lost. I don't keep up with win streaks. I don't keep up with losing streaks. No, Coach Gates is laser focused on the vision that he has for the program. He understands the standard that he wants his team to play at, and they're doing just that. They've been shorthanded, and that has hindered them a little bit. But at the same time, they're competing in games. As you see, they found a way to chip away to be back in this one. Did you see Sean East with the block out there of Cissé as well? Set it up for Carolero to get the rebound. Here he is working against Murray in the post. Size mismatch, but he gives it up. East into the corner. Tamar Bates with a shot fake. Three on the way. And Musa Cisse secures the rebound. That's a quality possession right there for Mizzou. Didn't come up with the basket, but at the same time, ran a lot of clock off and a good shot. Murray had a wide open three. Couldn't get it to go. It's tipped out to him. Second chance. That three's an air ball. Missed everything. T.J. Caldwell, but another Extra possession for Ole Miss. Shot clock. I think there's a shot clock issue there. But the bigger issue there for Mizzou is to get a quality rebound on the block out. Cissé doing an outstanding job giving Ole Miss an extra possession multiple times. When you're shorter and you have the height disadvantage against a good offensive rebounder, understand maybe it's not you that needs to pull the rebound, but you turn around and you face block him out. Understand who he is, almost like an offensive lineman. Put your body, face him in, route him out, and allow your teammates to do the work from behind you. So a third opportunity this trip down the floor for Ole Miss after a couple of three-point misses. Austin Nunez is coming to the game for Ole Miss. Wearing the number one jersey, Brakefield. Tough drive. He gets it up off the window. Those are the tough ones there. Really big shot there by Brakefield, who has so much talent. But for Missouri on the other end, you got to stop, can't pull a rebound. It's those frustrating possessions right there that you have to come up with if you're going to get a win here on the road. East working all the way inside, finds some space and flips it over the rim. Beautiful. What a first half for Sean East, 15 points. Beautiful, in the way he's getting it. You're talking about crafty moves, posting up, pivoting, using the rim as his shield. Phenomenal. Morrell from the wing, can't get the roll. It's halfway down and kicked out. Anthony Robinson 
Working in the paint, tries to go high, left it short. Tipped up and in, though, by Aiden Shaw. Really good job there by Shaw coming over after Brakefield took himself out of the play, coming over to try to reject the floater. Stay at home if you're Brakefield. Don't allow Missouri to have an easy offensive rebounding opportunity. Murray with the three. Prior to that, a 15-2 run for Missouri. Back to a one-point game now with Mizzou in front. Big shot there by Murray. 17th time this year that Juju Murray has made two or more three-point baskets. Aiden Shaw kicks it out. Here's Bates. Long two. And the rebound for Allen Flanagan. It's kind of a grown man rebound there. Yes, it is. Good job in defensive transition there by Mizzou. Breakfield. Murray pulls up, hand in his face. Don't love that shot? No, and I haven't loved, loved a lot of the three-pointers. I understand that Murray just hit a three after, but Morrell checking back into the game after coming up a little bit lame and having to get himself in it. I would like to see him get himself going with an easy one. He checked right back in, shot two threes, and came it up short on him. Find your rhythm to get back into the game. The hot hand cooled off after the break. There's a block by Flanagan on what looked like a great cut from Tamar Bates. And then Bates coming from East at his return to the lineup for the Tigers. We have to look to see what these teams coming out of this break are going to execute. Missouri looking to be showing a little bit of man-to-man. -man. Extended pressure. For the break, I said foul on Bates. It was actually Jordan Butler who was called for the foul for Missouri. Ole Miss trying to retake the lead. Nunez into the corner. Tough angle and an air ball from Matthew Morrell. That's huge right there if you Missouri Tigers in the bench is loving that. You come after a timeout in the break to discuss some things, and you get a 24-second or 30-second shot clock violation. That's what you want to see from your team to see some fight defensively extended all the way into half court in the passing lanes active hands moving feet and it results in an air ball but now Ole Miss extending their pressure as well Ole Miss has lived by the three tonight Missouri Less so, only two three-point attempts for Missouri. They've been trying to go downhill. They do it again. East with the find gets it to Aiden Shaw for the flush. Well, it's the points in the paint for Missouri with 14 of them, trying to find the highest percentage basket as they possibly can. But if you're Ole Miss, you know, this is a game where you have the athletic advantage. And there's Allen Flanagan doing what he does in the mid-range. That's his sweet spot right there. You want to get downhill. You want to put your body into someone, draw some fouls, get to the free throw line. Has not attempted one team free throw yet if you're the Ole Miss Rebels. Get into the matchup, play a little bit more physical, try to get some baskets into the paint, and try to reclaim the lead. Anthony Robinson bumped. Not only does Sean East have 15 points, he's got three assists, and that is high percentage for Aiden Shaw. Yeah, it is. You're dropping it off to Aiden Shaw, one of the better leapers in the SEC with the quick bounce. He catches the ball. He gets off the floor so quick, finishes above the rim. As they're sorting out a little something here amongst the team in positioning. Good job by this officiating crew to keep things cleaned up and get back to the action. Ole Miss has had Jamarian Sharp on the bench for a while with two fouls, and Missouri has attacked at low post with neither he nor Cisse on the floor. Shot clock under five. He's trying to create himself. Creates the contact. Couldn't get that one to go. And the shortest guy on the floor, Juju Murray, comes down with a rebound. Flanagan trying to take Mabor Majak off the dribble. Jock did a pretty good job there moving his feet. He did. Has to understand the scout report. If you're Flanagan, you know he's getting trying to get to the mid-range. Flanagan 
It's almost like that's a shot he had to settle for. And that's a win if you're Majak. You have to understand the scout report. When you're guarding certain players, what are they trying to do? Give them a little bit of cushion, force them to shoot from the outside. Bates patient there, tried to go underneath. He was able to split defenders. Foul on Morrell, his second. And free throws here for Tamar Bates. How about the evolution of his game? He was thrown into a bigger role this year because of some injuries. He was expected to be the sixth man for Mizzou this year. First 10 games of the season coming off the bench, seven points a game. Nearly 21 a game in SEC play. And that's something that definitely, as he stepped up to the plate, but you mentioned what his role was probably going to be on this team. You talk about if you add what he's able to do in a six-man position on this team, how good could this Missouri team be? But he stepped up when his name has been called. And I'd really love to see the physicality that, that Missouri is really playing with. They're really coming out answering the bell, almost playing as if they're the team that has an NCAA bid on the line. Three-point lead for the Missouri Tigers. 4.37 left in this opening half at the SJB Pavilion in Oxford. Morrell went to the bench with that second foul. Brandon Murray has come into the game. Jalen Murray with a big three for Ole Miss, and we are tied at 27. Good action there by the Rebels coming off that weave action, getting defenders mixed up. Got a slip man, and when it's Jalen Murray, it's man down, he's going to knock it down. That's his fourth made three of the first half. Seven as a team for the Rebels. Robinson, deep three, hand in his face, and Cisse pulls down the rebound. Ole Miss trying to get out in transition. Tipped around inside, and a foul that the Missouri bench did not like. Not at all. See, but some of those young bigs growing up as the season goes along. Well, well Ty Golden has a squad. And, yeah. and when you look at his roster, they have some really good players. Tyree Samuels in the low post is one of the better big men in the SEC when he really has it going. And you talk about the guard play with Walter Clayton on the outside, as well as uh, Riley Kugel. And, 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 and pulling as well. Pullen's been good. They can really fill it up from outside and be a big time team. Shot clock winding down. Tough shot from Flanagan, and Missouri grabs the rebound, and then a foul by Flanagan, and kind of a silly one there. And yeah, those are one that well, you gotta. They may not have called a foul. May have said stepping on the end line. Yeah. So no foul there. A step out on the end line. So it's Missouri basketball. Right. Yeah. But you know the tone of this one, you know, I have to agree with Ron Slay in the studio, as he mentioned, if you're Ole Miss, you have the big with Cissé, Jamin Brakefield, as well as Jamarion Sharp. You have to pound the ball inside and get some high quality shots and try to impose your will. Not shooting a free throw and we're almost done with the entire first half, getting crushed on the points in the paint. It looks Ooh. like... The floater from Robinson. It, it looks like Missouri is playing this game with much more urgency than Ole Miss at this moment. See those points in the paint number. Missouri quadrupling Ole Miss, 16 to four in the paint. Cisse, that is not his shot. And then that's not even assisted tackle. That's a solo <laughs> tackle for Musa Cisse. It is. It, wow. It, and you know, th this is a scouting report game. And, and, you know, for a guy like myself sitting on the court side, this is what you love to see. You see, you understand that Cissé, that's not his game. He misses the shot, trying to force himself to get the offensive rebound to get it back. But if you're Cissé, you don't shoot the 15-foot jumper on the baseline. They're giving it to you for a reason. Throw it back to the outside. Follow it with the screen and roll. Get freed up in the pick and roll game. And if the shot goes up, be active on the offensive rebound. This is where your game is going to be won. And Missouri right now is making all of the adjustments to make it difficult for Ole Miss, and Ole Miss has to make the make the switch. The jock has not been to the free throw line much this year, just two of six after that miss, the front end of a one and one. Missouri leading by two, 29-27 as we close in on the two-minute mark of the first half. Tipped around inside, Musa Cisse with the offensive rebound. He goes to the deck. 
And it's Missouri that digs it out. Robinson grabbed the loose ball. Bates trying to go to the rim. He's stripped. Robinson got it back. Honor with a deep three, and he was way off the mark. For Honor, that is his first three-point attempt of the first half. Into the corner, Breakfield, three is good. Big shot there by Jamin Breakfield. So talented, not only can do it on the inside, but showing you the stroke there, giving the Ole Miss Rebels the lead. Missouri led by the 15 from Sean East. He's on the bench right now. Honor working. Left hand, left it short, tipped around. Missouri's going to get another chance as Robinson runs down the loose ball. Aiden Shaw with a mismatch, dumps it off. Bates on the drive, draws the contact. That foul is going to go against Musa Cisse, his second. Sunday afternoon, it's a women's basketball triple header that starts at noon Eastern. We're featuring the middle game, Tennessee and Vanderbilt from historic Moore Memorial Gymnasium right there in Music City. Coverage starts at 2 Eastern, the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Should be another good one. Head coach Shea Ralph and the Vanderbilt Co Lady Commodores playing good basketball this season. We'll have another tough one. Tennessee with Rakia Jackson, so talented, could do it all forward. Good opportunity for Vanderbilt to try to pick up another win to get to the women's NCAA tournament. Bates missed the first, so Missouri 6 of 10 from the free throw line in this first half. Ole Miss still has not taken a free throw with 65 seconds remaining until halftime. The Rebels have made a season high or tied a season high for threes in the first half, third time this year. They have made eight threes in the first 20 minutes. Minute to go. Tied at 30. Murray guarded by Butler. And he had it stripped. Good job there by Butler. Running them off the three-point line. Force them into a driver into your help. But Butler's a seven-footer, and he really got down into a defensive stance. Working on Murray. Sean East back on the floor. Shaw working against Murray. Had it stripped. And who got it? Murray stepped on the end line as he was trying to save it in. That's a break for Missouri as Brandon Murray came in and stripped it away. Yes, he did. And a really good job on the baseline trap. Waiting until Aiden Shaw went on the bounce on the post up. When he spun baseline, the trap came over, stripped the ball. Unfortunately, stepped on the end line. Baseline out of bounds opportunity, as you can see, fighting for it. And Murray did step on the end line. Good work by our officiating group. Todd Austin, Mike, uh, Mike Nance, and Lucas Santos tonight. Now, this is a big possession right here for Mizzou. Eight seconds on the baseline out of bounds. You have to execute and get a quality shot. Cisse has come back into the game with two fouls. There's a quality shot from the corner. And Tamar Bates knocks out the three. Exactly what you want. And now the last possession will go to the Rebels. Ole Miss will take a timeout. Chris Beard with the use it or lose it timeout with 18.4 left. Well, these teams are executing, and this is a game that you want to see a chess match, but finding on the baseline out of bounds, Bates lining it up from the corner and knocks it down, extending the Missouri Tiger lead to 33 to 30. But like I mentioned, the chess match of the game, back and forth, it's going to be what the coaches are going to make as far as adjustments are concerned with the players. How can the players recognize situations and mismatches on the court? 18.4 seconds, you have to look to see what Ole Miss is going to dial up to try to get a quality shot, and hopefully for them, for the last possession of the first half. Missouri Tigers 0 and 11 in the SEC. We talked about it earlier. They've been competitive game in and game out in league play. Dennis Gates told us, he said, this is our third straight game against a desperate team. Texas A&M, they lost that one at home by 19. He said Texas A&M in desperation mode, trying to get to the tournament. Same thing with Mississippi State last Saturday, a game they lost at home. He said it's going to be no different with this Ole Miss team. 
who's playing for their tournament life. Absolutely. And, you know, that's a tough place to be in if your team is 0-11 in the conference. When you're playing against teams that are playing with major chances to get into the NCAA, but this Tiger team, they look like they're playing as well. Missouri has absolutely matched, if not exceeded, the intensity in this first half. Murray guarded by Robinson. They're not going to give him the opportunity to just stand there. Inside 10, Murray on the drive, scoops, can't get it to go. Missouri going to have a chance for one more shot. Robinson from half court lets it fly off the mark. And the Missouri Tigers will take a lead into the locker room up 33-30. They have a lot of the energy of January. Ole Miss 2-5 and five this season when trailing at the half. Right, and, and as you mentioned, Ole Miss 8 for 17 from three in the first half. I'm going to look to see some adjustments by the Rebels. Lived a little bit too much on the outside. I look to see their athleticism try to get downhill and impose their will. How about more of Sean East? 17 points for number 55. He's missed the last two games with a knee injury. Had a contusion to that left knee. Missouri did not play in the midweek. Dennis Gates told us he doesn't like the open date, but it may have served them well in giving Sean East a little bit of time to rest well, and get back. Well, he's a big reason why they big up in this game. But but a good and good set coming out of the timeout in the halftime break, getting East coming off that, that curl, coming downhill, stopping on the dime in the soft touch. But Flanagan, once again, the mid-range J, you have to run him off of that. But a really, really good player. And Flanagan... Oh. I thought it was going to be Flanagan called for a foul. No. They actually called Noah Carter. Said he stuck his rump out. Yeah. That, that's a tough call right there. And you know? Flanagan, as he went by, there was contact with, with the head of Carter. Look as he comes around the screen. It's, it's, it's a tough one. And you know, when you talk about you're playing with the ball, you would like to feel like you have control of the situation. You can initiate some contact. But a good job there by Flanagan hustling over that and drawing the foul with his hustle chasing that the shooter and the fact is Carter trying to set the screen moved his feet to try and kind of get there and, and knock Flanagan off the mark Dennis Gates did not like that call understandably but I do think it was the right call yeah he, he did initiate it was a little bit unnecessary but a, a heady decision what he was trying to do but but he didn't sell it the way you need to you got to be a little bit more subtle when you turn turn a little bit earlier make the player who's chasing the shooter take a different angle and then you open up things for driving lanes and even dropping off that pass in the, in the pocket pass. But nonetheless, Mizzou doing a really good job defensively. Nick Honor right there with the pressure that they've extended, forcing another turnover for Ole Miss. Cross court pass, they get it to Honor. Three all the way and three dead center for Nick Honor. That was something that Missouri worked on in their practice this morning that kind of overhand cross-court pass right. to the corner. That hook pass, when they go off that middle pick and roll, you have to look to the weak side. When you're on the weak side, there's only going to be a minimal number of defenders. When you talk about maybe it's two players open, it's going to be one defender on that side. So you have the numbers game, and you have to find the shooter. Breakfield draws the foul from Jordan Butler. Coming off that screen roll, the hook pass, as I mentioned, from Sean East going across court, finding their shooter, Nick Honor. He does the rest, cash money. Second foul on Jordan Butler. A couple of free throws coming here for Jamin Brakefield. Brakefield, five points in the first half. These are the first two free throw attempts of the game for Ole Miss. And, and very easily could have been called on the floor as uh, Jamin Brakefield did a really good job pivoting around but nonetheless so talented at an opportunity I'd like to see him try to get downhill a little bit more he has the size the athleticism the skill set get a player on your hip take them into the paint be a little bit more aggressive and get a higher percentage shot for many of the players for the Ole Miss Rebels right field an 83 percent free throw shooter makes one of two six point lead for Missouri prior to that free throw was their biggest of the game We've talked about Mizzou being in game. Six of their losses in SEC play are by less than 10 points. Right now, though, it's a lead for Missouri, not a deficit. Carter inside. 
patient, went up, and got it off the window. The half-court execution on the first several possessions here by Missouri has been fabulous. Doing a really good job of recognizing what the defense is in for Ole Miss. Are they in man? Are they in zone? Are they switching it after one pass? But finding the quality shot every single time. Flanagan, Carter doing a good job in the lane, and Flanagan draws the foul. Feels like Chris Beard talked to his guys in the locker room about being more physical and getting into the paint some. Yeah, they're trying to get into the paint, but they need to be decisive when they do get into the paint. If you don't have something initially, kick it out, relocate, and allow someone else to get to dribble drive and get a piece of the paint to find some action. The pivoting, the turning, they've been fortunate. They've been able to draw the fouls and get to the free throw line, but you want to get some clean looks for yourself or for someone else. Alan Flanagan tonight playing in his 139th career game. Makes the first, misses the second. So Ole Miss in consecutive trips gets to the free throw line and both times one of two from the strike. And Mizzou walking it up a court once again. The tempo is favoring the Missouri Tigers at the moment. Inside and Butler lost the handle. Butler was trying to look for that high, low to the high feed on the bounce pass, but Cissé might have got a kick on it. It's going to be a reset on the baseline out of bounds. Into the corner. We saw that play earlier. This time Ole Miss stays home. Murray, hand in the face, an honor shot off the mark. Ole Miss ball headed the other way. Tough shot there by Honor. A contested three in the corner. After just jabbing to create space, you want to try to get some movement, get the defender, try to move his feet a little bit, get yourself freed up. I know you just hit your last one, but find an open shot for yourself or a teammate. Three minutes into this second half, Missouri has increased its halftime lead from three to six. Missouri doing a really good job in the gaps on their defense. Break field. Toward the basket, draws the foul. He's headed back to the line. Strong move there by Jamin Brakefield, and a decisive move. Caught the ball in the mid post area. Quick spin back towards his right hand, gets it up off the glass. He's back to the free throw line. That's now three fouls on Noah Carter. This is an SEC play, 13 points a game, shooting 50% from the field. All three of those fouls on Carter have come in this second half. And that's huge. You know, if you're Ole Miss, you're not necessarily getting the point production that you want here to start the second half, but the fouls that you're drawing and getting to the free throw line will soften up this Missouri defense, forcing the adjustment and hopefully tipping it back into your favor offensively when you get the matchups on your side. Near capacity crowd at the SJB Pavilion coming to life. I get a little shell shocked after seeing Ole Miss storm out of the gates. Only to see Mizzou turn into the aggressor. There's that long pass. This time Juju Murray hops into the passing lane and gets the interception. You gotta meet the pass if you're Bates. You see it's coming short. Help your passer out. Breakfield with oh. a spin move. And overshot it, tipped around Breakfield, got his own miss, and then he was fouled. Is that on Carter again? It, it is. is. That is Noah Carter's fourth foul in less than four minutes in the second half. Wow. That's a tough one for Noah Carter. He brings so oh. much to this team. And they call it a shooting foul as well. Right. Defensively does so many things with his versatility and size, can guard bigger players on the low post with his strength and his leverage, as well as switching on pick and rolls with guards. You see, this is part of the game with the substitutions and the foul trouble that changes the complexions of the game. We saw earlier with Jamario and Sharp picking up two fouls, haven't seen him get back into the game right. and make an impact. But when you go deep into your bench, health, and having the depth makes a big difference in your teams. And Chris Beard is getting this, trying to get the crowd fired up here in head, the pavilion. Head coach turned cheerleader. Ole Miss has cut it to two. He understands the urgency of this game.
Honor feeds it into Aiden Shaw. Guarded there by Cisse. And Cisse the second time was called for the reach. Got away with it that first time, but went very pivotal thing. You're going to be shooting in the bonus uh, moving forward soon in the second half. So you talk about changing the complexion of the game and trying to be a little bit more athletic and powerful imposing your will inside. Uh, and you only can hope that Mizzou can break if you're, if you're the Ole Miss Rebels. Jordan Butler tipped in his own miss. Six points for Butler. Matthew Morrell had a fast start to this game. And quiet since made his first three three-point attempts, missed his next three, and he spins this one home. He's back on track here starting the second half with the sharp shooting. In each of the last five games, Morrell has made three or more threes. He's got four tonight. Butler working against Jamarian Sharp. Went around him and got it up off the window with a little scoop. And that's nice right there, what you want to see from the freshman using angles against the shot blocker. Had a little bit of scene, went up under the arm and used the backboard. Murray lost the handle. He got it stripped. I think East first got a hand on it, and then Butler finished it. Bates has it blocked. Sharp trailing on the play, got the block. Wow. And now on the other end, Murray with a shot flake. Dumps it off down low to Jamarian Sharp. He's fouled by Sean East. And a smart foul there by Sean East. Unfortunately, if you Mizzou, you don't want to give up that transition. Recognize where the shot block is with your Bates going down in transition. You got Jamari on shock trailing. You got to realize how to pull that one out or find the open man. But defensive transition after the block, get back on defense. Know where you're going to do, but a good recognition by Ole Miss finding Jamari on shock with the block and then with the dunker tip on the other end. He's a 54% free throw shooter. Ole Miss, fifth in the country. A little better than six blocks per game. Ball was knocked out and they said touched last by Ole Miss. It was off the fingertips there of Alan Flanagan. And listen, as I've mentioned before, th this is a scouting report game. And what I mean by that is, if you're a player on the court, every pregame, every practice, coaches are going to give you a scout report, and they hope that you read it. But when you read it, understand the <laughs> tendencies. Listen, they they, yeah, they only coaches can only hope that players read it. But seriously, they, they put a lot of work into it. They give you a scout report let you know what people are going to do. But this is a game where you really need to understand the tendencies of each five of the players on the team that are on the court and even the bench players. You have players on this team that come in that don't shoot in the mid-range and shoot threes. You have to run them off the line. You have post players that don't shoot jump shots that are offensive rebounding threats. Understand who you're guarding and where you're guarding them on the court and make the proper adjustment on both ends. Dennis Gates coaching from the sideline, but you got Sean East coaching on the floor for Missouri as well. East gets it out to Nick Honor. Whistle on a foul underneath. It's going to go against Musa Cisse. And that is four fouls now on Cisse. And remember in the first half when Missouri made the run, it was largely with Cisse on the bench. Yes. And now with Sharp only having two coming back into the game. And his interior defensive prowess changes some things. Murray called for the foul. It draws booze from the crowd and cheers from the Missouri bench. That will send Aiden Shaw to the free throw line. So this is what the Ole Miss fans were booing. Yeah, I think the ref got it right. If you're yeah, raked him across the arm. I think they saw the block on the end. 
clean, and maybe that's what they were worried about. Once again, there's, that's the scouting report. You understand there's a mismatch. You switched in on Aiden Shaw, who given up a lot of height at Shaw at 6'9", 6'10", on the low post. And you're Jalen Murray. You just wall up. Put your hands up. Make it a little bit more difficult. But understand, Jamarion Sharp is coming from somewhere. He will be there. Don't reach in at the last second and give up the reach-in foul. Flanagan goes straight up. He was bumped on the arm and has free throws coming up. This one will go against Mamorma Jock. This is the third Missouri game I've had this year. Had him several times last year. Tonight is the most animated I've ever seen Dennis Gates on the sideline. He is really battling for his guys. You see Alan Flanagan in conference play, 14 points, shooting 87% from the line, but another miss from the free throw line for Ole Miss. Right. And, you know, I tend to agree with you. You know, we had that game last year together, you yeah. and I, uh, Mizzou versus Ole Miss to finish out the season. And, and Dennis Gates normally be known for his calm leadership style. But you have to understand, when your team is 0-11, you have to give them some life. And at some point, you know, as coaches, you have to take that upon yourself with your leadership to give them life in a long grind out season to help them have what they need to get a win. Honor catch and shoot from the corner. He had a tough start to SEC play shooting the deep ball. But this is the best season of his career. Just a hair over 40% for the season. And that was created from inside out basketball. Aiden Shaw demanding that double team. Bates with the run through steal, trying to take it to the rack. And Ole Miss will take a timeout as Missouri opens up its biggest lead of the game. The Tigers up 51 42, a nine point advantage. And Tamar Bates out in the passing lane and closely to see if they want to make the Ole Miss Rebels an NCAA tournament team. But after the timeout, look for the adjustments to be made because there's a lot of basketball left in this one. Reminder on the quads, top 30 home win is a quad one victory. Top 50 neutral court, top 75 for a road win. T.J. Caldwell into the game. He's played sparingly tonight, replacing Jamin Brakefield. Foul was on Robinson. Morell makes the first. Both free throws, so the lead for Missouri is seven. Once again, the pace of the game here. Mizzou walking it up the court. The half-court sets. The execution will be critical as Ole Miss extends the pressure on the defense. Honor, catch, and shoot. We've seen him do it in the second half, and he does it again. Wow, great recognition. And that was also set up by Aiden Shaw's screen that he set on the low block. He got a little bit of a piece that allowed the person rotating out to contest that shot. Was a little bit late, and Honor did the rest. Nick Honor, three made threes in the second half. It's the first double-digit lead of the game for either team. Sharp with a long offensive rebound. Morell guarded by Aiden Shaw. Step back three. Good for Matthew Morell. Great shot there by Morell. You know he wants to get to the three pointer. 14 points now for Morell. He's made five threes and a couple of free throws in the game. Shot clock at 10. Honor off the screen. Shot clock at five. Aiden Shaw gets it to the rim. A good shot there by Aiden Shaw with a power dribble. Such a quick leaper. Got up off of his seat so quick before the shot blocker can get there with the jump hook. Murray on the drive with oh. the reverse and the scoop. 
Now that was nice. Beautiful move. Jalen Murray amongst the trees with the reverse with the English. Whistle and a foul away from the ball. That is Juju Murray. He was impeding the progress of Nick Honor, who was trying to get to another one of those catch and shoots. How about Juju Murray, though, on the offensive end? Seven point lead for the Tigers. It's going to be important for Missouri to make sure they execute well and get freed up. You're going to need a few of those breathing room threes to give yourself the lead and to keep it because the intensity has seemed to be picked up by the Ole Miss Rebels. Alan Flanagan getting the Nick Honor assignment right now. Honor's got three threes in the second half. Bates working against Murray. Had it slapped away. Got it back. Left it short. Missouri, though, with an offensive rebound and another chance. And you want to go right back to him. You have him in the low post. He has a size advantage. He just missed the chippy. Robinson contested off the mark from the elbow, and Ole Miss comes away with it. Morrell pull up three, hand in his face, and he knocked it out. That's six deep balls tonight from Matthew Morrell, six of nine from behind the arc. Well, that's what he's doing, and he's doing it the most. And you know, he understands if you're not close enough, Morrell's give you a little shimmy and rise up from deep bottoms. That was seven foot two in his face. A jock a little late on the closeout. 10-19 remaining. And Morrell's so quick and deceptive that he's going to make you think he's going to the drive game, but he gives you a little bit of a shimmy and rises up and off of it. But you have to understand, once again, the scouting report. Understand what you're doing, who you're guarding, when you're guarding him, and where you're guarding him. Run him off of the line when he rises up. Make him be a dribbler and a facilitator. Make him finish over top of the link with a contested layup, but nothing. You cannot allow him to just get a rhythm three from deep. Even if he's in NBA range, Morrell can make you pay. 20 points tonight for Matthew Morrell, 18 of those from behind the arc. The SJB Pavilion has turned into a pretty good home environment for Ole Miss. Former Rebel Brian Tyree in the house tonight. One guy that is not in the house tonight, though, is Mike Kelly, the radio play-by-play -play announcer for the Missouri Tigers. He's been the voice of the Tigers for a long time. One of the outstanding broadcasters, not just in the SEC, but in the country. That is the Missouri Athletics Director, Desiree Reed francois in Mike Kelly's seat tonight. Chris Trevino filling in, normally the analyst. He's full of double duty tonight as both the play-by-play uh, -play announcer <laughs> and the color analyst. Trevino, a great guy. So is Mike Kelly. I sent him a text earlier today. I said, I have you pegged as a play through the pain guy. <laughs> he said, I've been playing through the pain for 20 years. Had a knee replacement. We wish our good friend Mike Kelly a speedy recovery. We definitely do. You know, as we mentioned, the injury bug has been hitting Everybody. this Missouri Tiger team. It even gets over to the broadcasting team. But he stuffs it off down low, and Aiden Shaw finishes with the dunk. Wow. The quick bounce of Aiden Shaw gets off his feet so quickly and throws that down with authority. Aiden Shaw wanted an and one on that. Another sweet move from Juju Murray. The same with the English on the reverse layup. Turning a little bit of his patented move when he gets into the paint. East gets to the left side of the lane. Bounces it off. He was trying to get it to Jordan Butler. And you get a whistle. Foul against Missouri. Butler picks up his third. Yeah, Butler's got to shape up better on that baseline penetration and get there in the middle of the paint so he can receive the bounce pass for the easy two points. A little bit late getting there on that rotation results in him hustling, trying to get the ball and get some foul. And Ole Miss already in the double bonus with nine minutes and 21 seconds to go. TJ Caldwell into the scoring column. 
Caldwell had his career best game earlier this season against Mississippi State two and a half weeks ago. Went for 18 in that game on the 30th of January. Makes one of two, three point game. Miss really extending the defense. Morrell guarding East gets it off to Honor. Ten on the shot clock. Honor to the corner. Off balance three. That one rimmed out. Ole Miss trying to go fast the other way. Flanagan to the rim. Has it spin out. A whistle and a foul. So they got him on the arm. Foul on Butler. He's now got four. So two Missouri Tigers now with four fouls. You got Noah Carter, who got four early fouls in the first four minutes of the second half. And now Butler with four as well. And you draw fouls when you get downhill. Flanagan with an explosive play coming in transition. You know, getting the heels, getting, getting the Missouri defenders on their heels. Back to the free throw line. You want to make sure you stop him early. He gets that ball and he gets it around half court. Instead of backpedaling and trying to meet him at the rim, step up like a free safety, break down in front of him and make him change his course and slow down his tempo. But Missouri, the crowd is letting them know and Ole Miss is feeding off of it. One point game in Oxford, Mississippi with eight and a half to play. Bates guarded by Caldwell all the way inside. Flanagan comes down with a rebound. Again, pushing the issue all the way to the rim. Flanagan gets it to go, and Ole Miss is back in front. Outstanding play by Allen Flanagan. The rebound, taking it end to end. Takes a little bit of a bump and plays right through it. Tough finish. Flanagan's got 12. East guarded by Brakefield. Gets into the lane, goes up. He overshot it, and Flanagan able to dig out the rebound and get it to Morrell. Ole Miss again playing fast. Murray thought about pulling the he trigger. He did. Ole Miss's last lead was at 30 to 29 with a minute to go in the first half. Caldwell to the cup. And a timeout taken. Everything, you can feel it in your chest. Ole Miss had a School record crowd against Mississippi State, over 10,600 in a building where the capacity is 9,500. Over capacity two Saturdays ago against Auburn. Not a complete sellout tonight, but it is close as Sean East works against Matthew Morrell with Missouri down three. East finds an opening and he's fouled on the shot. He does always. An opening is exactly what East finds. Everything bottled up in that last possession. The entire possession, no one else touched the ball. But East finding a way, probing around, getting into the paint. And when he gets a little bit of a seam, when he can get it off, the way he shoots, the way he's able to draw fouls and, and bait the defender into cutting into his body, he finds himself back at the free throw line in big free throws here for the Missouri Tigers. And this is the first trip to the free throw line of the second half for Missouri. Remember, Ole Miss did not shoot a free throw in the first half. They've got 18 free throw attempts this in this second half. Missouri was 7 of 11 from the line in the first half, and they get to the strike for the first time with 7.21 to play. A tale of two halves when it comes to the free throw shooting, but it's because Ole Miss has been the more aggressive team in the second half. They've created the fouls by getting downhill, getting a little bit more physical in the paint as what Missouri was doing in the first half. Good to see the adjustments by both teams. Ole Miss has made its last six shot attempts. Allen Flanagan says make it seven in a row. And that's a money shot there for Allen Flanagan. Anytime he catches it right there on running that SEC logo, you might as well count it and get it ready to head back down the other court. Pressure up in him. Don't allow him to get that shot off easily, but that's easier said than done. Ole Miss comes up with a steal ahead. Breakfield with the hammer. Wow. Jamin Breakfield out from the break in the unselfish play 
by Flanagan, flipping it ahead. Honor. That's a foul on Murray. Flanagan once again getting down on the ground, getting the loose ball, flipping it ahead to his teammate. Brinkfield. Beautiful dunk. Austin Nunez comes into the game for Ole Miss as Juju Murray goes to the bench with four fouls. Jordan Butler in the game with four fouls right now for Missouri. Noah Carter on the bench with four. Rebels have four on Murray and four on Musa Cisse. Noah, excuse me, East rather, three won't go. And then a jump ball, a tie up there. Possession arrow to Ole Miss. And the Missouri bench is not loving that call there as they felt like. On the rebound try, I thought yeah, there was a foul there. Bates got the rebound and got hit across the hand. Missouri has not made a shot in almost four minutes of offensive possessions. Showing a little bit of zone, trying to switch things up for Ole Miss, give them a different look. Ole Miss has made eight of its last eight shot attempts. Here's Flanagan trying to make it nine in a row. This one off the mark, tipped around, and Matthew Morrell ends up with it. T.J. Caldwell working against Aiden Shaw. Gets into a tough spot, and a follow off the miss by Alan Flanagan. Wow. A shot that looked more like an alley-oop. Flanagan, Johnny on the spot, throwing down the hammer. Caldwell might say, well, can I have an assist? Yeah, that's what you want. You, you tell him. You, you point to him after you make that play. You tell him to point back to me and say, yeah, good pass. The scorekeeper to put that one in there the way it needs to be. Bates downhill, trying to go hard with the left hand. Couldn't get it to go. Brakefield has it knocked away, and he is fouled by Nick Honor. Caldwell with the alley-oop over to Flanagan. Beautiful play. So we go to the other end. Missouri over the limit. So two free throws coming up for Ole Miss. The aggressive play of Ole Miss in the second half has impacted this game. Them getting to the bonus early in, in the second half has changed the complexion of the ball game, not allowing Mizzou to play with the pressure that they want to play defensively. And now Ole Miss finds himself back on the free throw line. So, Richard, you, you wanted to talk about Alan Flanagan in our Open tonight. I asked you who's the most important player. You said it's Alan Flanagan. And there were a lot of guys you could kind of look at for Ole Miss. I think he's been the spark for the Rebels in this second half and a guy who has the ability to play more physical. He has, you know, 16 points, nine rebounds, and three assists to boot. But it's not only just the numbers that he has, it's the activity that he's had, being Johnny on the spot with the offensive rebound putbacks, getting loose balls with rebounds out of his area, and then pushing the break. When he's getting out in transition, coming downhill, he really puts pressure on the defensive end, and he's been able to draw fouls, which has changed this game. It's softened up the defense of Missouri, and it's allowed the rest of his teammates to benefit. A 19-point second-half swing. A really aggressive play there by Robinson, trying to go to the rim, draws the foul. Allen Flanagan picks up his first foul. Angel Reese and number 13 LSU highlight our Monday night women's basketball matchup. It's right here on the SEC Network and the ESPNF. Square off against the balanced Texas A&M team looking for a statement win. Coverage tips at 7 Eastern, 6 Central on the SEC Network and the ESPNF. Robinson makes the first free throw. Or a good women's matchup. Joni Taylor and that Texas A&M staff trying to get another win against Kim Mulkey and LSU. Anthony Robinson, a freshman whose minutes have gone up this year, does not have a start. This is the 23rd game in which he has played out of Tallahassee, Florida, Florida State High School. 
And you know, he went to that last basket strong. Basket strong. He, he went up there trying to dunk it, and he was rewarded to get the foul drawn into the free throw line. Breakfield goes at Butler. Little help defense by Carter. Ole Miss ends up with the offensive board. Breakfield takes it inside, has it blocked again. That's two blocks on that trip for Mizzou. Noah Carter back in with four fouls, trying to take it inside. It's tied up, and this time the possession arrow will favor Missouri. Still a lot of time left in this game with four minutes and seven seconds to go. A baseline out of bounds opportunity for Missouri. They've scored earlier in the game on a set like this. This is one where you have to really dial something up, set solid screens to get a clean look because the Ole Miss defense is playing really good basketball. They have elevated their intensity, and the crowd is into it. You want to get back in this game. This is the spark that you have to make right here. We've had a bunch of whistles in the second half. At three, is that going to count? Foul was yeah. away from the ball. Does. They will count the three-point basket. The basket, the foul on Nunez, happened before the shot from Bates. And so instead of that three counting, you got Missouri at the free throw line. The three was either going to, free throws were going to happen regardless. Right. Question was, was it, as you said, a chance for a five-point possession? Five. Yes. Or a two-point possession here? One and one. And instead, it's an empty an possession. Empty. Wow. What a swing. Matthew Morrell. Turned down that open three. Nunez. Flanagan. Working against Butler. Five on the shot clock. Trying to find some space. Fades away and had it rim out. That's a tough shot for Flanagan. It is, and that zone defense that Mizzou went and set up really showed some problems there for Ole Miss. In the execution. Oh. Nunez, great play with the steal. Ahead right, to Matthew Morrell. Now Ole Miss taking it a little deeper in the shot clock. Missouri's biggest lead was 10. Ole Miss is led by nine on two different occasions. Three minutes to play. Rebels by seven. Breakfield working against Butler. And a travel, a turnover by Ole Miss. That's two trips in a row where Butler has been really fundamentally sound. He has. He, he stayed down. He's kept the active hand. You talk about seven feet tall and sliding, and not just sliding against anybody. You talk about two stops in a row against Flanagan and Breakfield, two of yeah. the premier scorers for this team here with Ole Miss. It shows the promise that they have in Jordan Butler on this team for the Missouri Tigers. Allen Flanagan for Ole Miss, 16 points and 10 rebounds, his fifth double-double of the season. Carter gets it off to Sean East, and East is fouled by T.J. Caldwell. Sean East will go to the free throw line. Still a one and one situation as that was the ninth team foul on Ole Miss. Sean East with 19 points, six assists. Pure from the free throw line. Clutch free throws in this moment. Still a lot of time. You got to anticipate some pressure that's going to be jumped in if you are uh, Mizzou with 2.38 to go in the ball game if he makes this second free throw. 20 points for Sean East. Eighth time this year that he's gone for 20, now at 21. Missouri trying to find a way to find that first SEC win. And jumping back into that 2-3 zone. Morrell at the free throw line, squares up, and gets the friendly roll. Yeah, that's a big shot there. That gives Ole Miss the breathing room that they really needed. 
That's just a good individual effort. Morrell sizing his man up, elevating over the top of him, and sticking it. That's the first non-three-point make in the game. Carter was bumped by Brakefield. A lot of physicality on that play by both players under the boards. Brakefield called for the foul. A little bit of bumping early on by both. Carter throwing it back at him. There it is. Brakefield. Ooh. I don't know. Looks like Brakefield might have a little bit of a. That last bump didn't really look any different no. than the first two bumps that you saw. That was two big boys going at yes, it down it low. Was. Noah Carter at the free throw line. Carter has two points tonight. Oh, and he gets the roll off the high bounce. That high, soft bounce off the back iron. Hey, you, you'll take those sometimes. You got to get a couple of those going. When you were shooting earlier today, I, I don't think you hit the iron the whole time. <laughs> we did have a good little pickup game uh, earlier with, with, with Cross out there. Had a fun time. That's a little Cross, not big Cross. <laughs> yeah, Obi gave you a run for, for your money. He did. Two minutes to play, five-point game. Ole Miss in front, 71-66. Rebels looking to get back to even in conference play. They are currently 5-6 and six in the SEC. Flanagan, tough shot, won't go. Butler with a good rebound. Carter gets into the lane. Carter, strong move, and it rolled out. So close, and that's a situation where you say follow your shot. It could have fallen right back to him to get back in, but the stand that Ole Miss needed. Everything but the finish that time for Noah Carter. 80 seconds remaining. And a foul on Bates. You have to admire the fight of this Missouri Tiger team. You come on the road, this does oh, not question. look like an 0-11 team in SEC play. Look at Matthew Burrell's SEC number, 16 and a half per game. Over the last four games coming into tonight, he was shooting 44% from three and 49% from the field. Tonight, Morrell, seven of 10 from the field with six made threes. And he stepped up big in the big moments in this one, finding himself back at the free throw line. You know, but the physicality that he has and the athleticism relies a lot on the outside shot. And when he can put it all together to have the outside game as well as drive game, wow. getting to the free throw line, he can have a phenomenal future. Missed them both. Morella, 74% shooter, and has made some clutch ones late in games this year. But he missed both free throws, and so Missouri with a minute five to play, finds themselves down five, trying to get that first SEC win. And Carter is fouled from behind by TJ Caldwell and will go back to the free throw line. Really good defense right there by Ole Miss in that entire possession. Caldwell just not being disciplined at the last second, reaching over the top of Carter, picking up the foul, sending him to the free throw line. You just want to catch it. You've done your work. You've pushed him outside the paint. Stand solid. The shot clock is going down and contest the shot or force them into a tough situation. But nonetheless, giving Missouri an opportunity to add two points to the scoreboard with the stop being, with the clock being stopped. Remember, Noah Carter picked up four fouls in the first four minutes of the second half. And then he had to sit for an extended period in this second half. We step back into the game as made his presence known. Yeah. Trying to make it a three-point game with the second free throw. He got them both. Missouri down three, 71-68 with 59 seconds to play. And here's the pressure being extended by the Tigers. Missouri going back to man-to-man. -to -man. Your Ole Miss, you just got to make a play from an individual player standpoint. Will it be Flanagan? He gives it up to Brakefield. Brakefield goes at Butler, spins in the lane, dumps it off, and Matthew Morrell is fouled, and we'll go back to the line. The foul on Nick Honor. 
felt like one of those moments where you were just going to get a straight one-on-one, -on -one, but Ole Miss unselfish with the basketball unselfish, there. Unselfish, found a cutter with Morrell cutting on the baseline. Nick Honor turned his back a little bit when Brakefield got the ball in the middle of the paint and was operating. Morrell finding the way on the backdoor cut, and the dump off was there. But two big free throws as he missed the last two. That makes it a four-point game. Missouri takes its final timeout. Monday night for the second. Morrell's got 23 points tonight. Twenty-four for Morrell, two off of his season high. Joe Lunardi projects Ole Miss as one of the last four into the NCAA tournament. A win that the Rebels must have. Carter, ball fake, gives it off. Butler draws the foul. Flanagan. Butler going to the line, but that's one right there as the freshman will learn as he gets stronger and grows more mature in the game. You go up as strong as you can at seven foot. That's when you got to try to go up strong and finish that one with a dunk. Go through his arms and finish that one with power. So, so a little bit different for a big man. When you're talking about a smaller player, you want to go into the chest of a big player. With a bigger guy, it's go through whatever's in front of you, right? Well, if you're seven foot, you want to go over him is what you really want to do. You, you, you're standing there in the dunker spot. They've dropped it off to you. you got to think dunk all the way, and you think it with authority. So you don't want to leave any chance to it. Whoever's in front of you, you got to have the mentality. I'm going to put this one on his head. Jordan Butler right there, he'll learn that as he goes into the game. But he knocked down the two free throws, and it's a three-point ball game. Missouri trapping Ole Miss, trying to create a turnover in a three-point game. And a foul on Missouri. That foul was on Anthony Robinson. And that will send T.J. Robinson, or excuse me, T.J. Caldwell to the free throw line for Ole Miss. Ole Miss does not shoot another three in this game. They will be at 50% or better from behind the arc for the sixth time this year. Last time they did it was before conference play began, back on December 23rd against Southern Miss. Rebels 11 of 21, 52% from behind the arc in this game. And over Caldwell half of, gets them both. And over half of those three is coming off the hands of Matthew Morrell. The big free throws there by Caldwell. Sean East, little time, whistle, foul, blocking foul on Brakefield. And so Sean East, the aggressor, and he's got free throws. And a good, and a good call there by the official. If you're Brakefield, you want to stand strong. The flop, you don't want to put it into the hands of the official as Sean East is running all the way down the court full speed. You don't have the angle squared up. You have the bigger, stronger body. Take it in the chest. Keep your hands high. The, the clock is on your friend. Now you give it, uh, Mizzou an opportunity to shoot two free throws and jump back into their press with 11.9 to go in the game. Sean East now with 22 points. That ties his season high. East missed the last two games with a knee contusion. Happened in the game against Vanderbilt. The team captain leads Missouri 15 and a half points per game. That's ninth best in the SEC. That's a new season high with 23 points for Sean East the second. Back to a three-point game, 11 seconds to play. Ole Miss turns it over. Shaw got it. Now it's Robinson, dumps it off inside. Basket for Missouri for Bates. That makes it a one-point game, 75-74 with 5.4 to play. Wow. Mizzou says this one's not over. Trapped in the corner, did a great job keeping active hands, not going for the foul immediately. High hands, gets a piece of it. 
Gets freed up, takes it in, drops it off. One point ball game. You know, put yourself in an intentional foul situation and that would not be what you want. Go for the steal. You got Aiden Shaw on the passer, the most athletic player on the team. Press up, try to get a deflection. Brakefield gets it into Caldwell, and there's the foul. Ole Miss really spread the floor there, and they had Caldwell. It's an interesting set, as you can see. They got players lined up in the deep corners of the court, so they might be looking for the long pass. Nick Connor the inbound. He gets it to East, and there is the foul at half court. 2.9 remaining. Chris Beard has told us in the past that his strategy under about seven, you got to be careful. And one of the things that he harped on today with us is we got veteran players, whether you're talking about Morrell or Brakefield. And so East now at the free throw line. And the veteran Morrell did a great job of closing that space on the sideline, pinning East in and causing that foul. Now this is an interesting situation if you're going to see if it's going to be a substitution going for Aiden Shaw going into the game just in case there's a miss as he want to go for, go for an offensive rebound put back with 2.9 to go in the game. But you see the substitution, Cissé checking into the game, Aiden Shaw going into the game. You might want to miss this and try to go say, for the tip back. In intentional miss? I, I would go for it. I don't know if you have enough time. You have to try to miss this and get in there. Sean East made it. One-point game, 77-76, 2.9 remaining. It's been a great day of SEC basketball. This one no different. Ole Miss gets it into Morrell. He's fouled by East with two seconds on the clock. That was an immediate foul. Took off only nine-tenths of a second to extend this game. But back to the line for two important free throws, but I don't know if it's enough time left for Missouri to get down 94 feet to get a quality shot. You're looking at a heave to maybe give themselves a chance, depending on what happens on these two free throws by Matthew Morrell. Twenty-five points now for Matthew Morrell, and Morrell's looking over at his coach Chris Beard. Do I make it or miss it? He's trying to figure out. Do I make it or miss it? Is what he's saying to the coach. He said, "Miss it." If he misses it, that means Missouri has to secure the rebound. Clock starts when the ball is touched by a player. And movement there on the line, but it was away from the lane, not into the lane. He ends up making it, so a three-point game, two seconds remaining. Good decision to make that ball. Three-point lead, tough chance here for Mizzou. Nick Honor, he is the trigger man, gets it to East. Couple of dribbles, lets it fly, Sean East. Over the backboard, and Ole Miss will escape tonight at home with a 79-76 win. Missouri stays winless in the SEC. That is their seventh loss in conference play by less than 10 points. And Ole Miss's NCAA tournament hopes stay alive with the win here at the SJB Pavilion. Well, what a game. That was a great game. And you talk about a well-coached game by both of these teams. Credit to Mizzou by giving Ole Miss everything they wanted. But Ole Miss stepped up big in the second half. They were aggressors. They played big-time basketball and increasing that NCAA resume. Thanks for being with us.